Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here, and I want to talk about the long run in Bakra just a little bit more. So at the Bakra tables, we all know that people play all sorts of patterns. They follow streaks. They use rituals. They um, look for ways that uh, they can beat the game that are just not scientific, whether it's progressions or using some lucky charm or thinking there is some player who has an idea when to enter and exit any given shoe. All these sorts of things are just nonsense. Um, yet the belief persists throughout the player community and honestly on the part of some of the casino management as well that some players have figured out how to beat Bakra. So what I want to present today is a little simulation. What we're going to do is we're going to play 1,000 shoes of Bakra and see what happens. Now, just to keep it simple, we're going to make the player flat bet player bets. And the reason for players, we don't take the commission, so it's easier to tabulate the outcomes. Um, so we're going to play 1,000 shoes. And we're going to simply see if I flat bet $100 per hand for each of those 1,000 shoes, what happens? What are the uh, distribution of outcomes we can expect? So I have a little spreadsheet that we're going to go to here. So here it is. And what this represents is the thousand shoes. So what we see here, for example, going down the left hand side with the player results is a tabulation of the number of each outcome that has occurred. This is the raw data. So we see one person lost $2,500. Um, in one of these thousand shoes, another player lost $2,300, five players lost $2,100, and so on. So the tabulated results are along the left-hand side. But what's more interesting here is this graphical representation of the results. So again, we're talking about playing a thousand shoes and keeping track if we flat bet $100 on player, for an entire shoe, for each of these thousand shoes, we're just betting player, what is the distribution of outcomes? So what's one of the things that's interesting about this application is that I can simply run another thousand shoes that quickly. So let's run another thousand shoes and another thousand shoes and another thousand shoes. And what we see over and over again is that the distribution of those um, results tends to look a little bit like this bell curve. And this bell curve is, in fact, what would happen to this graph if instead of a thousand shoes, we played 10,000 or a million or a billion. So the more shoes we play, the more we're going to tend to be able to fit this distribution of outcomes to what's called a normal distribution or a bell curve. So when I run a simulation, there's another uh, piece of data that I've captured here, and this is in these statistics down here. And this tells you how much the simulation is matching theory. So we know the house edge is 1.24%. So in any given run of a thousand shoes, we see that we can get a house edge that's the actual um, total won or lost by the casino divided by the total wagered. And we see that that doesn't match theory but it's relatively close. And we also have the theoretical win. So theoretically, we should win $98.81 per shoe from a typical player. But in actuality, over these thousand shoes, we only won $69.87. So from a casino perspective, a thousand shoes, if you were a Macau casino, that may be um, half a day. But if you are a Las Vegas casino, it could be a full month. We see that this could be, um, a 20 or 30 percent decline in revenue just purely based on random fluctuations for the month. So let's run another sample and we'll see in this case the um, casino made a little bit more than expected or the players lost a little bit more than expected. And, and watch those numbers down here in this graph and you'll see that each time I run this thing I'm getting a very different looking result. I'm never going to exactly match theory, not for a thousand shoes, but um, we're getting something that over and over again is roughly bouncing around these theoretical values. So um, again, what we're looking at is 
this particular graph right here, uh, the bell curve. Now, one of the things to think about is this tail out here, this 2.15%, because this confuses a lot of people, both players and casinos. And maybe we'll focus on, on um, the left-hand side. So, for example, what this represents over here is a player who lost $2,800 in a single shoe. Now, from that player's perspective, that's just um, a very unlucky person, right, who's really going to um, have to explain why he's so bad at reading the tea leaves for this game, how he could be so ignorant about it. But it's just a one in a thousand uh, event for this person that that happened. Well, look, he's way out here in this 2.15% region, which means what? It means that there is a 98% chance that the next shoe he plays is going to be better. So when we talk about reversion to the mean, we don't mean that somehow the cards remember who you are. What we really mean is that if you have a very, very um, bad result or a very good result, then what, what's going to happen is that this 2.15% region, if it's a very bad result, then there's a 98% chance she'll be over here next time. And if you have a very good result, then there's a 98% chance you'll do worse next time. So the cards aren't remembering who you are and taking away your great winning event, um, or if you lose, making you win. It's just that it's very unlikely that you'll get a result. Um, as dramatic as that in any shoe, um, in particular the one following a losing shoe or a winning shoe, should have no expectation that you're going to have another losing shoe at that rate or winning shoe at that rate. Now, there are some players who believe they can read the tea leaves and always manage somehow to, to be out here in this right-hand side, figure out a way to leave the game um, mid-shoe or figure out patterns or, or a hot shoe or something like that. But the fact is, it's just a question of throwing a dart. Yes, some player is going to be here, the one in a thousand player, and then the next shoe, that same person, one in a thousand, might be out here. So there might be um, a one in a million that the person has two remarkable winning shoes in a row. Well, that happens. Um, there are millions of people who play Baccarat, so some of them will have these extraordinary results um, out in the fourth or fifth standard deviation. But whatever happens on one particular um, shoe that you play has absolutely nothing to do with what happens on the next shoe that you play. Whatever happens on a few hands that you might play has no effect or impact on um, the next hands in the same shoe. These are independent events. One doesn't rely on another. There are no patterns in Baccarat. So what do we mean by the long run? Well, the long run is not about how many hands you have to play to get to the long run or, or when will I enter the long run or what is um, it mean to, to um, get there in some sense as a destination. That is not at all a description of what is meant statistically by the long run. What is meant is that this graph right here will converge to this normal distribution, which is to say that in the long run, there will be the more shoes you play, the more the shape will converge to this one. All right, so that's the long run. Now there are all these um, ideas of interpreting that as meaning um, that if you have been a winning player, then you should lose. Somehow, if you were out here, then you should come back here. Or if you were a losing player, then you should win. So that's the gambler's fallacy. There's nothing that says that just because you're out here that you somehow have to come back to the mean or that if you've been losing, you have to win. There is no memory here. All we're saying is that um, there will always be these players who are three standard deviations above. There will always be these players who are three standard deviations below. They are unavoidably going to always be in any um, long-term scenario. And I've run into that in my own casino consulting where I have um, 
I've actually been in casinos where players betting massive amounts of money have been two or three standard deviations above um, their expectation. And when you are betting $10,000 a hand or $50,000 a hand, if you go on a plus two standard deviation run that lasts months or a year, um, even two years, um, that could cost the casino millions of dollars. So that is purely um, just by chance, and there, those players have to exist. In fact, 2% um, of players have to be plus two standard deviations or higher. So that means that one in 50 player is going to go on a run that's going to last a very long time where he could be a winner. And if you happen to be that one in 50 player, you may very well think you know something, but you don't. You're just as um, subject to the laws of mathematics as any other player, but um, you can still go about boasting that you know something and selling your systems or showing off your chips or your um, all the other things the casino has given you for being such a player, but you are just a statistical fluctuation. Well, good for you. Um, the player who loses over that same period of time, it's not like um, that player has suddenly um, getting paid back, um, has a curse on them, there's some retribution from the gods for some act that they have done. One out of 50 players is going to just suffer a very, very bad fate at the table for an, for an extended period of time. And um, it, it has to happen because... You know, if one player plays a thousand shoes, a shoe is typically an hour um, and a half, then we're talking about a player playing 1,500 hours of Baccarat. So playing 1,500 hours of Baccarat, you will still find opportunities um, to be a massive loser or a massive winner at the end of that result. But this is the rough outcome you should expect for the distribution of your shoes. All right, um, one other quick point here. Um, look, there is no such thing as um, our money or their money. So just because a player beat the house out of $2,900 does not mean you're going to get your money back. It just simply means they are this player out here. The objective of a casino is not to um, beat every player. You will beat the players you do, which are these over here on the left side. Other players will beat you, the ones over here on the right side. Um, but you will make, uh, the casino will make its profit just based on the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem. So in particular, um, casinos that have this mentality that we have to get our money back are ones that think that these players over here shouldn't exist. If you are over here, it means that um, the casino has done something wrong and you should pay them back. Um, just a gigantic fallacy that they're trying to get their money back from you. Meanwhile, the players over here that have to exist, these players are going to possibly find all sorts of perks coming their way and you might find casino management mistakenly saying, oh, these players are easy to beat. We should just give them lots of money, uh, lots of free rooms, flights, uh, meals, shows, whatever, because they're easy to beat. So that is a mistaken idea that there are players that are easy to beat and there are players that you want to get your money back from. The correct uh, view is that you will always have this distribution of results. You should treat all players equally. You should not view that there is your money versus casino money. There is only long-term profitability as indicated by the um, house edge matching theory um, in these simulations of thousands of shoes. All right, I'm gonna make this spreadsheet available. So if you click on the link below, you should be able to go to my website, advancedadvantageplay.com, and find this website in the uh, this um, spreadsheet in the article accompanying this video. Okay, that is all from me um, for today. I hope you got something from this. Bye.